Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. Welcome to Editing Writing. This is episode 71, Book Coaching 2. As a professional writer since the age of 20, uh, my guest on the podcast today, Romana, supports people who want to get started with their own writing. She offers different programs on how to get started with your first book, how to persist, how to publish it. Her online workshops strive to give writers a happier mindset. She's written over eight books and has, has three more on the way. She helps the writer get past the overwhelming feeling of just getting started. Please listen. Hi, Romana. Thanks for taking the time to come on the podcast. I super appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm more than glad to be here and very excited. Uh, very good. Me too, because we're talking about two very, very different, well, two or three diff very different things. Uh, I'll lay out for the listener what we're going to be talking about. Your, your publications, your books, uh, your method that you now, I believe, and you can uh, elucidate me on this, uh, that you now sort of teach or help other uh, writers with. And then we're going to have a little discussion about astrology, just sort of for fun, but just because we, I guess we disagree on it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, <Let's> since, disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but since you're in Austria and I'm in Canada, you can't pull my hair in any way. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so let, uh, seriously though, let me tell you, you, you published a fair number of books and um uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I usually like to read some of an author's books before they come on. I did not get a chance to do that. I'm really sorry. Uh, but maybe you can tell me, since really the focus of the of the the episode is about your method kind of thing, about uh, you know getting them to the end. But you've got like uh, about eight or ten books that are published now. Is that right? Yeah, I published eight books up to now. Working on the next three ones. And uh, I got so many questions from other people who want to write their first book. And they asked me, how do you get started? How do you know if it's right what you're doing? How do you stick with it, right? And don't get desperate and just stop in the middle. So many questions coming up. Right. Um, and uh, then I, I sat with me and thought, okay, why did it work for me? And uh, there are some, some points um, which made up like a, a way how to finish that first book, start it and finish it. And I thought I have to tell that um, to people who, who really get desperate already because they, they have to tell something. They want to tell the world, but they never get a, a good way to get started. So let's start at the, the personal part then. Like, how, how did you get started? Like, why did you start writing? And, uh, and then maybe uh, tell a little bit about how did you finish your first, first book without being discouraged and saying, oh, this yeah. is too much time. I can't do this. So how did you get started? Like, why and when? Like, how long, is it, how long ago was it that you started writing? Um, I start, I have to admit that I, I, I'm kind of uh, kind of a natural born writer. So I loved writing when I was a kid, when I was a young person, I started writing for newspapers, just for a hobby that never was my profession. Um, so I've been working for, the, for uh, the Austria's biggest broadcasting company for over 17 years. And uh, I got fired from one day to the other. So oh. I, was, <laughs> I was like, and they didn't even talk to me. They, they sent me a letter. So you open your po post box, right? And what? I'm fired? What? <laughs> Please take your plant and go home. <laughs> so uh, nowadays, um, I, I really can laugh about that. But in the moment, I was desperate. No, I, I, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I was 44 and very specialized on TV productions. And we don't have many companies in Austria doing that. We are a very small country. So I started looking for another job and it was without any chance, no chance at all. And after four months, um, like walking to that um, office where, where they tried to find a job, I, I was so desperate. I said, I, no, I, I won't come anymore. I get self-employed now. I found my own company 
and I try my best um, with what I can, which is astrology. I, I was an astrologer already in these days and, uh, and writing. So I didn't have any clue, but I thought, okay, if you, if you like writing and now I have time without end, I was a time millionaire. Then. Time um, why don't I write a book? I sat down, yeah, why not? Now, now it's the time. And I thought, okay, what, what, um, what can I do? What are my hobbies? It, it really, I took it per random, the topic, which was a garden book for people who have no money at all because that was my situation in these days. Mm. So how do you um, live from your small, tiny terrace or, or a balcony garden without having any money or very little money? And I, I just sat down and, and collected all my knowledge about gardening, uh, which I, have, I got from my grandma. She was a mm. big gardener. And I wrote down everything. And, and, and then I realized um, writing a book is something completely different if you compare it to writing for a newspaper, where sure. you just write about 700 words and that's it, right? So I took an online course in, at an online academy where they just taught you how to structure. And that helped a lot. It took two months and then I had to structure. I wrote 12 emails to publishers and two of them answered and they wanted to have my book. Wow. So yeah, I was lucky, lucky. And uh, I, I could pick the one which suited best. Um, and if I may interrupt, I would say, I wouldn't attribute it all to luck because just when I heard the topic of your thing that you of your book, I thought that that's fascinating that uh, I could see that where people were, you know, uh, didn't have all the money in the world and thought, Hey, I know how to garden though. Maybe I can feed myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So please, please yeah. continue. Yeah. 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 So um, that, that publisher was, um, was very happy with me. Because I'm a person, if I start something, I, I finish it at the moment we said I got, I'm going to be finished. So I didn't know that other authors are not like that. <laughs> so <laughs> they were like so happy with me and they um, told me that they wanted to continue working with me. And whenever I have other topics, uh, non-fictional books, I should tell them and we, we will do it. And I was like overwhelmed. I've never, ever expected that. So that was in, I started writing the book in two, 2013. It got published in 2015. And I published the next two books in two, 2016 with that publisher. Right. And one of those books um, uh, got translated into English. It got on the British market. Um, so yeah, I was overwhelmed. That was uh, unbelievable. Um, that, that, if I may step in again, that yeah. maybe uh, that maybe was probably a really big step, right, to get into the English market. English mm -hmm. being, of course, you know, the most widespread language in the world. So there, that's probably a really good move there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's what I never would have dreamt of. I, I, the German market is small, yeah, but but if you're in there, you, are, you can be happy too. I've never thought of, of getting a, a translation and um, yeah, step into that big market. So I mm -hmm. loved it. And then I, 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 I like, I got a bit addicted to that writing. I mm -hmm. loved it so much, right? Mm. So I, I found out that it helps me a lot to just start with all my passion, start into the topic I like. Um, I wrote books with other people who are experts in their field and I was just the writer. So I did all the organizing, the writing. I took all the pictures. I'm a hobby photographer and I loved it. And found out that when it comes to the end, so the last two or three months be before you should be finished, it helps me to travel, to just grab my stuff and travel somewhere where I'm alone without that daily stuff and finish the book. Hmm. And that's where, what I um, sticked with. So the next four books I wrote with uh, co-writers who came to me and said, I have a very interesting topic. Are you interested in, would you like to work together? Let's do that book together. So I did that and I liked that too. And 
then I've been traveling a lot up to then. So I started long-term traveling in 2015 and I, I wrote a blog about all the adventures I had. And from that blog, I wrote my first novel. That was book number seven. So this was an enormous step getting from the non-fictional world into the fictional world then. Yes, for sure. Had you been up till now a reader of fiction or do you like fiction? Yeah, I love it. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of John Irving, for example. I love him. <laughs> um, and some other uh, writers. So I, I am a, a real uh, reader. I mm -hmm. read a lot. And that's one of the tips I, I give to my uh, pupils. I call them or students is better. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, read a lot. It's not enough to call yourself a writer. You have to read a lot. I think actually, you know, it sounds like the simplest thing in the world that you're saying, but a lot of people don't pay attention to that. It's sort of like uh, uh, if you're a carpenter and you never, ever visit other buildings and look at what other people are doing, you know, you can't just put in your own nails and figure I must be doing it right. You're, I totally agree with you. You have to be reading. That's how you get exposed to other styles other uh, vocabulary, other, all sorts of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very good advice, yeah. Mm, yeah, and it opens your mind. I think that reading is, it's like traveling. It opens your mind. You get a full sight or a bigger sight of the world and all the connections in it. So I really, I think that is an advice that every um, writer should, grab and do it just read a book every month <laughs> <laughs> that's right i wish I, I wish i did more reading myself uh i'd like to, i'd like to be able to i'm now retired so i have no excuse but i'd like to be able to read a book every week i think that's yeah. very doable you know it's, that's not like we're oh my god uh you should be able to, I should be able to read 50 books a year, you know, but I have no excuse. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, but yeah, life is short. That, that doesn't mean that what the situation is now may not change. But so what I wanted to ask you is the, the, the next step that you took. So you put out this book and then you had a, a bunch of people who were asking you, well, please tell me how you did it kind of thing. But then that translated into a, um, like a business basically, right? You're, you're a book coach, editor. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what you call yourself. Uh, yeah, I, I call myself a trainer. It's more training. Training. Um, <laughs> yeah, and what I, uh, what I did is I sat down, um, as I said, and found out, okay, where, where are my biggest challenges? And what I do now is when um, people come to me and ask me, could you train me? Could you help me? Could you support me in getting started? Um, I first of all ask them, do you know your obstacles? Do you know where your biggest challenge is? Many people don't know. They just sit down. They want to start writing and it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So they don't know why they can't get started. And then the astrology part comes in if they want. So I, if they have no clue about, I ask, of course, some uh, very good questions. <laughs> and uh, then I ask them if they want me to take a look, an astro astrological look where the biggest challenges are. And I found out that, uh, most of the time we can do it with two sessions to get that um, big stones out of the way. So you, you, you will be able to, well, let me first do it uh, without the astrology part and ask you, what are the mm -hmm. kinds of things when you ask people, what are your obstacles? What did they, what were some of the answers that you got when you asked that question? Um, some of the obstacles are, um, I don't find the time. Mm. Um, I don't find the, the rest. So I'm always nervous and always thinking about the book. And then I never sit down and get to a point where you get relaxed and open-minded enough. Right. Um, one is that people think, so they have that wonderful idea. Then they write down a title maybe. And then I sit down and say, oh, no, I don't have, I, I've got nothing to say. That, that book, book has been written already. Mm. So many people are cleverer than I am. They know more. They um, own more wisdom. 
I'm not good enough. So that I'm not good enough is a huge part, huge part where people just struggle with. Um, even though maybe they have a publisher already, even I have pupils with that situation as well. They had a, a wonderful idea. They found a publisher already without having written a, whole, a, a page. And this company is waiting for that book. Wow. And all of a sudden they are there and I'm not good enough. I can't do that. So you're getting to there, what you're getting to, what I would call it either uh, sort of literary self-esteem or even, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this term, imposter syndrome. Mm, yeah. Where mm. people feel, I'm not, I'm not a writer. You know, mm. I, I, I don't do that. And yeah, I could really see that that would be an obstacle. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I myself use many techniques to overcome situations like that, starting, for example, with vision boarding or um, creating a roadmap, a real visual roadmap that helps so much in every situation in life, but for the books, uh, of course, as well, to imagine yourself at your first book presentation with a book in your hand mm. and you feel that applause, people mm. wanting to buy your book. Mm -hmm. You have to get into that emotion. And this is like, um, that's a rocket drive <laughs> if right. you have that emotion, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so during this process of uh, you're, you're saying your students are your pupils and you're helping with obstacles and sometimes you bring in a kind of an astrological analysis or explanation, or is there any part in the process where you're actually like, do they do the writing and, and, and then it goes off to editors or do you actually edit as well? Do you edit what they do? Um, we normally, normally start with um, my seven steps, which is, first of all, find a title. And of course, then we talk about the title, um, a subtitle. We talk about introduction. We talk about um, how do you present yourself? Because, you know, every book has its back cover, I call it, where, where you can read something about the author. You have to write that yourself of course. Mm -hmm. And that's very, that's hard for people to write about themselves. So that's the first part we do to make a short book description and an author's description. And of course, they have to write that. And I read it, we talk about it, discuss it, make it better if possible. And then we start chapter by chapter. And I read it. Uh, but I I have to admit, as I'm not, um, English is not my mother tongue. So um, I, I, I do the um, editing for the German uh, speaking people, but for the English ones, I tell them, I just can't tell you about the content, but please don't get me with grammar. Mm -hmm. that, uh, <laughs> of course, I know some English grammar, but I, I wouldn't ever, I call myself an, a full editor for English texts. Sure. So um, this, this is where uh, that point where they have to find uh, when we are on this point, a professional who uh, supports them in their language. Right. But uh, this, it takes about, yeah, depending on, on, on how, how much time the people invest, but that takes about, eight to 12 weeks to be on that point, right? To have some chapters and then uh, start uh, looking for a publisher where they have people who edit your texts. Yeah. Oh. I find it fascinating uh, what you were saying, just, uh, I mean, you said it earlier, but one of the things you just said reminded me again of it. And you were saying about the title, but that where people have the right to describe themselves on the back cover. And mm. again, uh, it suggests two things to me. One is that people are just not used to thinking about, well, what exactly am I or what do I do or what do I say about myself? So there's that just sort of factual aspect. But there's another one that probably has to do with, again, the, the things you were referring to earlier. 
modesty, lack of confidence, perhaps, maybe a self-esteem issue of some kind where people don't feel that they're, you know, they feel I'm not a writer. I can't write something for the back of a book. That's not me. Is that, am I getting at the right things here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is the that that is the thing that they might have a wonderful idea or even have written 20 pages or whatever. And all of a sudden that inner voices come up, right? I'm not a writer. I haven't done that before. How should I know how to do it? Of course. And that's the point where I tell them, um, hey, we don't learn that in school. I took a course myself. And I would highly recommend that course, but it doesn't exist anymore. So that was one, one reason why I, I thought, yeah, then I have to do that <laughs> because they help me so much, right? I don't know why, why it doesn't exist anymore, but it's not there. And uh, uh, now I can do that. I have all the knowledge and the experience, of course. Yeah. And I, I know both worlds. I know the publisher world and the self-publishing world. Right. So I did both, and I know the pros and cons of both worlds. We can talk about that as well. And um, yeah, that's actually something I'm always interested in. Is the uh, this the people often the terminology people use now? I've, it's it's interesting. I've done over sixty interviews, uh, or no, sixty episodes of the this podcast. And I see different terminology come up. I've often seen now, instead of self-publishing, people are calling it indie publishing, as in independent. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I see what people, when, say, when they say publishing, I see that called traditional publishing. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> which, love it. <laughs> which is, which has a very grandfatherly or grand... <laughs> apparently sound about it it sounds like something that'll be dead in 20 years you know <laughs> uh, which it may well be if uh, if I can sort of you know turn a joke into a fact kind of thing because uh, I'm a big proponent of indie publishing or self-publishing whatever you want to call it because it's uh, it's such freedom and also such timeliness because uh, you know you were not you were maybe a little bit lucky but also skilled to be able to find a publisher back in 2013 or whenever it was but a lot of people have to wait will never find one if mm -hmm. they try they will never find a literary agent and if they're depending on their book getting published either through an agent or directly with the publisher it will never get published however with yeah. indie publishing you make the call and uh, that's why i love this is the beauty of it is is uh, is exquisite so mm -hmm. so are, are most of your are most of your clients your pupils indie publishers indie writers um one of them has a publisher already another one has i think very good chances to find one so i think that will work the others are um not sure yet so mm. one young man he's writing his first novel at the moment he's not sure but he i feel that he he'd love to have one of those traditional uh publishers as you call it <laughs> sure. um uh, i the thing is um that's one part of my courses as well to tell them honestly what it means to do indie publishing. Because um, me in the lucky position uh, with the publisher for the first four books, I, I was like, um, like princess on a silk <laughs> thing. You get all the marketing done. Mm -hmm. They do that for you. Um, they bring your book to the stores, to the bookstores. Uh, they present it on, on big um, presentation platforms. For example, Frankfurter Buchmesse. I don't know this in English. <laughs> the Frankfurt Book Fair. Yeah, it's very yeah. famous. So they yeah. bring it there. They uh, organize interviews for you, newspaper interviews, radio interviews. So um, this means that you don't have a lot of work with all that marketing stuff. 
Mm -hmm. I loved that very much. With the self-published books or indie published books, of course, that's your thing to do. You have to do it by yourself. You have to, um, in, in our case in Austria, we still do that, um, to go to some independent bookstores, small bookstores, ask them, would you like have my book in your window? Would you like to present it? May I come over for a book presentation? You go to public libra libraries and ask, may I present my book here? And then you have all have to do all the work inviting people. So you don't want to present your book in front of two people, right? You want to have 50 there. At right. least. So um, this is a whole lot of work. If you love work like this, people, there are people who love it, right? To market themselves, then it's good. But if you're not a good self-marketer, that can be hard times. Mm -hmm. So I, I teach that as well. So how to market then if you don't find a publisher or even when do I make the decision? So how long do I wait until I say, okie dokie, there is no publisher at all. I do it on my own. I'm glad that in German, they still have the phrase okie dokie. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> you don't have it anymore. <laughs> no, we do. We do in English. But it, so it sounds even more charming in, in, in a German accent. <laughs> okie dokie. That's very good. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, do you, uh, yes, I, that's a very good point about how long do you wait? And, but the other thing is that let's say someone uh, has waited a little and they decide, you know what, I'm going to go indie with this after all. And you just mentioned, you gave a very nice an, uh, analysis and succinct about the marketing aspect. Do you then uh, like advise that they, because there are freelance uh, market marketers and publicists, right? Mm -hmm. There are people who uh, specialize in, uh, you can hire as a publicist, a freelancer. Do you recommend that or, do you, or are you not in the business of doing that kind of thing? Hmm. Um, I, of course, do not know how the English market is um, in this uh, field. But in the, on the German market, there are some, um, yeah, like publishing agencies, I call them. Who, who charge the author, the author for printing. So the, the author has to take all the printing costs, but then uh, just gets the uh, publisher contract, meaning normally you get between nine and 14% of each book on right. income. So I always, um, I say that's, that's, not, uh, that's not ethic, right? You don't, you cannot charge for the printing. So you have as a publisher, no risk at all. And then give the author just a small amount of money. So you make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if someone is very unclear about how do I want to lay out my book, um, then you need someone like this. Sure. Yeah. But um, as long as uh, people have someone who does the layout for them for a small amount of money or they know how to do it um, themselves, I'd recommend, okay, if you do self-publishing or indie publishing, then find the printing company, get your documents there, they print it and you sell it yourself. Yep. You don't have to, to pay a publisher then if you pay the printing already. That's my opinion. It's very old fashioned. I know that, but um, I, I really stick with that. Yeah, no, and it may be different in North America because mm. a couple about three years ago, I co co wrote and co we finally co published a book, uh, myself and uh, my co writer, uh, and we what we did is that we hired a publicist, and what this person was to do was to what you mentioned about arranging for interviews and getting me on you know tv interviews and things like that and she was modestly successful i would say but not hugely and uh the other thing of course you mentioned is that what you're missing in indie publishing is getting your book in bookstores because that that's a huge thing mm -hmm. uh 
And the other thing you also mentioned, which, which is true in North America as well, is that yes, it's very, very much advised that you get someone to design for you. And that doesn't mean necessarily pictures, but interior, what they call interior design or book design, you know, what it looks like inside. It has to be a beautiful product. You don't want it to seem like something that you just typed up and sort of, you know, it's now available, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. very good. That's, that's very good advice. Very good advice there. Um, so how is, how is the business going? Are you getting lots of clients or would you like more pupils or? Oh, I'd love to have more of them because of course I, I want to be successful, meaning I want them to finish on some point, right? And then they are gone. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> I love to um, uh, have more of them. And I, I do it um, on, uh, with Zoom calls, right? So I do it uh, all over the world. Uh, every Thursday, I have, all, I have those slots of Zoom calls where they can hop in and do a one-to-one -one and we talk about their challenges, uh, where, where they need some support with the texts, where they think, uh, is, is this chapter long enough? Mm -hmm. How long has a chapter to be, right? right. Questions like, simple questions you, you have to think of, of course. And next to this, I do uh, group courses as well and do-it-yourself courses. So I have a two weeks program for free where people just hop in, they watch a video every day and get started with that. Hmm. So they what, can what, choose. Yeah, that, that could be, I mean, interesting. I could see you, I, not that I know, you know the business better than I do there, you know what you're doing, but you could easily see you doing seminars where they work for free. Basically, you know, uh, 40 people sign up and you, you don't give your full, obviously you can't give your full attention, but mm. you would give the, and do it on Zoom. And that would be a way to maybe attract, I'm not giving you advice. I'm not pretending to do that, but I can imagine that easily. Yeah. Uh, you have yeah. expertise that other people don't. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, um, I have a monthly webinars on Zoom. Yes. Where, where they, all people who show up, they get 90 minutes of like the gold nuggets put together in a nutshell. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, some of them come back and say, I want more. Or I want to do it again. It was fun. All because right. I'm a person I love when there's good energy and people are laughing and having fun. Um, this is a very important thing if you learn something new. So from the, the brain science, you know that the more fun comes with some things, the more happiness, the more people uh, remember what they heard. Yeah. That's uh, simple brain science. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. Actually, I'm, uh, I happen to be writing a biography of a writer, an English writer who lived in the 18th century. And he's one of his famous sayings has to do, and I'll get the wording wrong, but Basically, if you read anything and you don't read it with pleasure, you won't remember any of it. And the yeah. same thing applies to many things in life. If you do something and you don't do it with pleasure, hmm, it won't take any effect, right? You need to be mm -hmm. laughing and happy while you're doing it. Yeah. 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 Very good. That's excellent. Yeah. So That's let's talk fun. about astrology. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. As a good. as a very <laughs> as a very balanced Libra, I don't believe in astrology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Uh, uh, and as a and as you know, I'm sure you know better than I, Libra is unique in the signs in that its symbol is the only one that's an inanimate object, the scales. All mm -hmm. the other ones are animate objects. The Libra is unique in that. So your Libras are, are famous for, are supposedly famous for, uh, and I, 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 I'm not being disdainful and mocking. I'm just talking, oh. I just happen, <laughs> I just happen not, because part of me is always shocked that I'm surprised often how, you know, the, what you read about Libras does apply to me. You know, I'm very balanced. I'm very, uh, I don't know how to judge well. I'm very much an appreciator of beauty. Beauty is very important to me. 
uh, I mean, beauty in all things, in art, in, in everything. And you see that about Libras, whereas the Aries people don't give a damn about that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So, but just me, so, so I, I, but in, in my, if I were, if someone were to sit me down in a courtroom and say, sir, do you believe that astrology is a, is, is a, is a thing, a real thing that means something? I would say no, but oh. uh, you had a very good answer for me about uh, when I was, when we were setting up this interview, I said, I don't believe in astrology. And you said, <laughs> <laughs> you said it was very funny you said well I don't believe in my dentist either but what he does for me works so <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a very good uh you certainly put me in my place so that's very good but tell me tell me I guess two things one is if you can just say uh, however briefly about what why is it that astrology is something that's legitimate and in practical terms, how is it that you use it when you're trying to analyze the obstacles of your pupils? Okay. Um, the thing why astrology works um, is a question that most of us astrologists uh, think of. And one of the most famous German uh, astrologists, Hajo Banzhaf, who founded the school in Munich, many, many years ago, he said, um, honestly, I don't know why it works. Um, the most important thing is it, it works. <laughs> so mm. um, uh, other astrologists say it's like um, what we call what the, what the big thing shows, meaning the stars on the sky, um, is it's like shown in, in us tiny persons down here on earth. It's like a, a mirror. Um, I have to admit that up to 2009, I didn't uh, give a damn about astrology as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a, con you're, a con you're a convert now then. <laughs> I, um, I studied uh, political science and journalism, so I'm a very science, science person. Um, but what happened then was, um, you know, you live your life, you, you're doing pretty well. And all of a sudden, in my case, I had uh, five uh, serious accidents within one and a half years. So I, I almost broke every bone in my body. Hmm. And I, I went to a psychotherapist and wanted her to like help me, fix me, right? There's something hmm. wrong with me. Hmm. <laughs> And this lady, she started laughing and couldn't stop and said that, first of all, that's not how psychotherapy works. <laughs> and the other thing is, um, if something is coming up in this way, right, five accidents um, within one and a half years, serious ones, then I would ask an astrologer. And I looked at that lady and thought, she's crazy. This lady is completely out of her mind. And um, she just gave me an address and said, um, whenever you think you need more help, go there. And half a year later, I did. And I sat there and the lady just told me straight ahead why I had all those accidents and what's happening in my soul, which I didn't want to see up to that moment, I have to admit. Hmm. Um, I was like, yeah, speechless. Went out there, I was speechless and it took me another two months to think about it and then I thought this is witchcraft I want to I want to learn that I want to study that <laughs> I want to know how it works so I started um, an academy for astrologers which took uh, three years um, and I always said from the beginning on whenever a client comes to me and I tell him what I see, and he says, that's completely nonsense. Mm -hmm. Then I stop doing it. I so. see. I, I was wanting to ask you that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, But I started uh, doing astrology with client, clients after finishing school, which was in end, at the end of 2011. And uh, since that, I had about 500 clients, but uh, not one of them ever said that's nonsense what i told them 
fascinating really yeah. fascinating it's still fascinating for myself yeah. i have to admit i i am just what i am i am a very i'm a science person i'm a tech a technical person. Mm -hmm. I worked uh, when I worked for the broadcasting company. I did camera work. I was a, a technical person, a tech person. Mm -hmm. So I look at that birth chart and I see what's happening. And I tell people. And um, I, I really have not a clue why it works that well. It does. And when it comes to the obstacles or fears of my uh, pupils, of my writing pupils, then sometimes it's um, what you just said was fascinating, right? The Libra thing and the Aries thing. Libra and Aries are um, opposite. And for example, if you are an Aries person, uh, and not only mean in the star sign, which is the sun in your birth chart, but you have other planets as well, right? But let's say this is a person with the star sign of Aries, but he or she has three other planets in a very slow sign, what we call it. Aries is a quick sign. Hmm. So for example, in let's say Capricorn, huh? then this person will be a very quick a quick starter, right? Yeah, let's do that. Blah, 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 like this. But the Capricorn part of that person will always say, are you really sure? Are you good enough? Is it secure? Mm -hmm. What are you doing there? Are you crazy? So you have those two voices in yourself and every person on this world has voices like that. You don't have to use astrology to find that out, right? Um, it, it happens once in a while that we do something and after five minutes we say, oh my God, how could that happen, right? Yeah, and, I, and I, it's a, that's actually a really good point. Even if you forget about astrology, anyone who's introspective at all and thinks about their actions, and there are a lot of people who don't, right? They just sort of go along and never think about anything. But if you think about it, yes, uh, you can see I have a tendency to this, but I also have a tendency to have it uh, affected by some other thing. Or like you say, I did this thing and it seemed right at the time. And then you wake up the next morning, and you go, oh, my God, why did I do that? Thing? <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I hear you from that point of view, but I don't need to bring astrology into it to, mm -hmm. to do that. But I've always been fascinated, just as, for example, I'm, I'm an atheist, but I'm fascinated by religion and God and all those things. But I, do, I have no belief in those things. Mm -hmm. But I'm still fascinated, partly by why people believe, partly by the stories, partly by whatever so uh mm -hmm. it, it, you don't have to you don't have to believe in something in order to be interested in it that's so true yeah. and um, as you just said you don't need astrology um i i just found out within that uh, years of doing it that it makes um it makes it easier to see very quickly what's going on so what i do with my pupils or students is that I use it um, as a help. But if someone says, nah, come on, I don't like that, then it's okay. We can talk on a, on a very, yeah, daily life basis, talk about obstacles as well, or challenges or stones in your right. way, however you might call it. Right. And um, sometimes it, uh, it even helps if you ask the right question, what I, of course, can see in the birth chart. You, you ask someone, hey, um, what if your inner voice that always tells you or asks you, are you good enough? Are you good enough? Are you good enough? What if that voice would change into a very caring structure giver? Yeah. Whenever I say that and that's again a capricorn thing or a virgo thing that structure um people are very touched because it is the big secret of those signs 
it's fascinating because about five years ago, I went through psychotherapy mm -hmm. to, to help me with uh, basically I had had uh, what most people call anxiety. I used to call it tension all the time, tense all the time. On the outside, people would say, wow, you look like the calmest person I've ever seen. On the inside, very, very tense. And this psychotherapy changed my life completely. And, uh, I, and it was a very controversial method that the, that the psychiatrist used and everything. But I'm just using this as an analogy to say that you can, uh, you can, there are things, there are things about myself that I might not know, but that a professional can recognize and use silently use that knowledge that they have to try to help me. If you, if you see the analogy I'm making with your own work, like you just said, for example, for the people who dismiss astrology, uh, you still know a few things and you can still be uh, using that knowledge, uh, but not talking about it in Aries terms or Capricorn terms. You can just be asking questions. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's, that is the best way anyways to not use astrological terms because uh, people don't know them, right? It doesn't make any sense if someone sits uh, next to you and you tell him, oh, really, you are a Leo, you are optimistic. <laughs> to, 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 to. No, um, maybe this person isn't optimistic at all at the moment, first of all. <laughs> yeah. And next, it's cliche, right? Um, I, I, I would, I would rather ask this person, hey, um, do you sometimes listen to your inner child because this is a Leo topic? And is this inner child happy? Right. Because this is a Leo topic. Leo is a sign or an energy, I call it, which really needs happiness to survive. Right. Happiness is survival mode for them. And it's, uh, yeah, it's more fascinating if you just ask those questions than coming up with astrological terms people don't understand anyways. That, no, that makes sense. And actually, mm -hmm. in, a, in a client situation where you're a professional giving advice to pupils, it makes perfect sense for you to not use it. Uh, at least explicitly when people say, oh, no, I don't want to hear that. Uh, it makes sense as a business person to, to do it that way, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Romana, this has been a fascinating discussion. You're, you're really delightful. I, I just the whole thing from from soup to nuts, as they, we say in English, has been very okey dokey. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for coming on and uh, good luck, good continued luck with your career. Thank you very much for having me. Great pleasure. Take care. Take care. <laughs> and that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. Please take the time to rate me on Apple or wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'll talk again soon.